in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select DeAndre Ayton. Let's just look at DeAndre Ayton, number one pick overall. Suns playing fast. Ayton. Welcome to the NBA, Big Ben. Hey, everybody. Welcome into our NBA TV studios. I'm Kristen Ledlow, alongside Drew Gooden, Brennan Haywood. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to run through 10 points on the Suns. Is it a new day in Phoenix, guys? I think it is. It's still hot. I, I think it is. It's real hot like in it. Phoenix. I think it was the, like a I th- sun pun. Yeah. <laughs> I think the sun is rising in Phoenix now. They got some good young talent. The sun is rising. I see what you were doing there. This is me seeing what you did there. Yeah. All right. Well, we're just weeks away from the highly anticipated debut of DeAndre Ayton. Here's what he had to say about the rookie season ahead. Coming in, I just want to win. You know, I'm not really thinking about what the media says. Uh, I'm just coming in, you know, trying to win as much games as possible this year and have fun with it as well. They take this hoop life very serious. Like, this is really a job, you know, and you really got to take care of your body every day. You know, you got to watch what you're doing off the court as well and, you know, just always be, always be responsible. <laughs> That's what I felt like on my first day take here. Life You're the number now. one pick. You better be responsible. Got to take, take this hoop life serious. <laughs> really now. a job. Yeah. No, I know. There have been early reports, though, of DeAndre's teammates just stunned by how good he looks in training camp. I know that it's a league that's gone away from the traditional big man, but how good could he be? I think he'd be very good. Watching him in college, he's not a big stiff. The league is, hasn't gone away from big men that can play. They've gone against the big guys that are immobile, and that's not who he is. This is a big man that's versatile. He can slide his feet on the perimeter, which is key for pick and roll defense. And at the same time, he can get things done on the block, finishing with a nice jump hook, turnaround Jay, has a nice, nice touch out about 15 to 17 feet with his face up game. And he's very athletic and he's strong and knows how to finish. So I think there's definitely a place for him in this league. I think he's going to hit the ground running. They're going to need him to play well. And I think he's going to get a lot of experience early on. And he's going to flourish. What do you think? I'll say uh, the first question whenever I. If I was to pick a number one pick in a, in a draft, I'm going to say, what is the ceiling? What's the ceiling for DeAndre? And I would say it, it, the sky's the limit for this guy because not only is he aggressive uh, on the de- defensive end, he's a monster on the offensive end. And not only in the paint, but mid-range jump shot off the post, mid-block, uh, even range out the three-point uh, territory. I've seen a couple – uh, clips where he shot a three and actually made it look good, great for him. And actually, I had a chance to uh, talk to one of the guys that worked some out during the summer, and he's actually improved his three point shooting, unlike uh, Roberson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We don't have to get yeah, back We don't have to that. bring that back, but, but he's actually improving. He has also point, yeah. said that he and Devin could be Shaq and Kobe 2.0. Easy. Okay, big fella. Easy, 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 but. Easy. Could you see early comparisons in the way that they could work together? Um, I don't see Shaq and Kobe just because the games are so different. Devin is Devin reminds is, is more of a shooter. Like he gets into his package really, really quickly, can get his jumper off. Kobe was that guy that you just couldn't stop him anywhere on the court. He was the next level athlete to go along with it. And DeAndre, he's a dominant force. But I've only seen one Shaquille O'Neal since I've been watching basketball. I think he can dominate inside, but I think those comparisons are a little premature. Let's get out there, see how we're feeling, see if we can win some games, maybe make the playoffs first, and then we'll start talking about Shaq and Kobe. It's exciting I love before the con- you get out there. I love, yeah. the, I love the confidence, but I yeah. think right now we need to pump the brake on the Shaq Kobe talk. I think with Devin Booker, I don't think we give him enough credit as being a good ball handler. I mean, we always talk about his shooting, how well he shoots the ball, how well he scores the ball, but he's honestly an underrated passer. He does a great job facilitating for his teammates. He's a great uh, side pick and roll player. He's a great middle pick and roll uh, ball handler. And he also has a guy now that he could throw the lob to the rim to in Aiton. So I look forward to seeing that. Well, speaking of Devin Booker, in early September, he underwent surgery to repair an injury to his right hand. Recent swelling prompted that decision with an expected recovery time of six weeks. But Devin said at Media Day his plan is to be ready for game one. Here's more. It's the ligament in between my pinky and the next finger. Um, just had to go in there, um, get it right before the season. You know, I'm supposed to be back before before game one. So, you know, minor surgery and, you know, quick, quick recovery. Are you concerned at all about Devin's long-term health? Not, not concerned. It's a minor surgery. Uh, just a little cleanup. Sometimes, you, you know, you go out there and play all these games, your hand gets hit, little things happen. 
wear and tear, but this is nothing I worry about. This isn't like an Achilles injury, an ACL, where I think it's going to take a lot of time to recover and come back. I think he'll be just fine. The fact that he's eyeing game one tells me he knows he'll be just fine as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that injury right there, me and Brendan probably had an injury right now sitting here talking about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I might have a broke, yeah. uh, a broke left uh, middle, a metatarsal. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's something that you could bounce. Scientific. Yeah, yeah, you could come back from that. That's an injury that is not on a foot. You know, it's not a knee. It's not a hip. It's nothing career threatening. He's a young guy, a young man, and I think he'll heal and be ready for the season uh, quite early. Do you expect though? for the Suns to have a slower start to the season since he and DeAndre won't have been able to practice. Slow, slower? Uh, well, we expect okay, him to come out of... <laughs> Blazing? Well, we expect him to come out of win the West? Slow-ish. <laughs> Just slow. I, I think there, no matter if whether Aiden was healthy, whether Booker was healthy, this team is young, growing, trying to win. You throw in Bridges, their draft pick, Josh Jackson from the previous years. Um, they're trying to put it all together. The NBA is an unforgiving league, so I expected the Suns to come out slow regardless. Um, and then as the year went along, build up and learn how to win a couple of games. I think we're going to see some high-scoring offense now that they have Coach Eager mm -hmm. uh, over there. And <clears throat> just with... Devin Booker having the season he had last year, I just think he, you know, getting this big contract, I think he's going to be wanting to be that guy, a 30-plus point scorer. It's going to be some exciting basketball down in Phoenix. Where do you rank him in the NBA's best shooters? Ooh, ooh shooters or scorers? We can do both. We've got nothing but time. Let's say top 10 in shooting, <laughs> but scores, okay. maybe top five. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's one of the better scorers we have in this league. Shooting, um, he, he can shoot the ball, too. I can't, I can't think right off the top of my head, but when you think of guys like Clay, Steph, KD, mm -hmm. those guys go this ahead. what they do. Yeah, those guys go ahead of him. But then after you get past that group, you, you really, you really have to start team, mentioning Devin way. Booker. All those guys are on the same team. I, how, how incredible in is the that? West. How incredible is that? So slow start yeah. is expected. But in May, Igor Kokoskov became the first head coach in the NBA to have been born and raised outside of North America. He was an assistant with the Suns from 2008 to 13, and he said, it doesn't matter if you're an international or American coach. All that matters is can you get it done? Can you coach? How big, though, an adjustment will it be taking the helm as head coach? Well, historically, the Phoenix Suns are a high-octane basketball team. You know, with Steve Nash, the years with Charles Barkley and Tom Chambers and, and that group. Now, we want to bring that same identity back to the organization. And what coach do you hire is Coach Igor who is a guy that around the league is known for one to have, one to win in the high hundreds, you know, and not want to play a below 100 basketball game offensively. So I think it's going to be good for Devin Booker. I think it's going to be good for all those guys, all those young guys that they have on the Phoenix Suns team. I think Coach will be just fine. When you look at that, I think it's harder for coaches that are just coming over into the NBA. When you look at his resume, I saw a lot of stops as an assistant coach. And when you're an assistant coach, you get to learn. Every stop, you get to learn a little bit something different. What do I like? What do I want to steal from this coach? What do I like from these offensive sets? What defensive sets do I think work for these guys? How do I manage the players? How do I handle certain situations? All that experience has led up to this moment. I think he'll be just fine. Now, when you just come fresh off the boat and try to go from overseas to coaching the NBA, that is tough because the players are different and there's a, there's a time to get acclimated to the difference. But right now, I think he'll be just fine. He has plenty of experience. How then would you define success in his first season? Uh, success is getting the young guys to play well. And Just making them show up on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, success, success is getting the young guys to play well. Uh, winning more games than last year and just basically seeing the upward trajectory. If you look at this team, you say, hey, we have something. Hey, this is our nucleus. This is our core. They look like they're playing well together. And we maybe win 28, 30 games. I think that would be a successful season for the Suns. I would use an analogy. It's like a free lotto ticket to scratch. You know, <laughs> you got it. You, you scratch it. You yeah. might win. You might not. You know? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be Phoenix Suns fans want to hear that. But you didn't have to pay anything yeah, for it. It's free. So. It's like, hey, you know, so it's no pressure is what I'm saying. It's no pressure on the coaching staff. It's no pressure for this group of guys that's coming in. They're trying to get an identity there, and I think it's going to take some time. The Suns made four selections in the 2018 draft. 
starting with DeAndre Ayton, first overall. Sire Smith was selected 16th and traded to Philadelphia. Okobo and King were then selected in the second round. And this summer, Ayton was one of just seven players to average a double-double in Las Vegas. He was named to the All-NBA Summer League second team and was eventually shut down, because why not? How, though, will that Summer League success translate to the NBA? Well, Summer League is just that taste. Sometimes you have guys that do excellent in the Summer League and don't do well in the regular season, and then you have guys that do poorly in the Summer League and they go on to have great careers. Summer League is just that taste. It just gets you your feet wet. It's not a barometer of how good or how bad of a player you are. You just want to go out there and get that experience. Understand what the NBA game is about, the speed of the game, the physicality, um, how fouls are called, the rules. Things are a little bit different than college. So Summer League is like a, it's like an appetizer. It's just get, it's get, it's getting you ready for your main course, which is the regular season, which will be on the way, kicking off pretty soon. And a little more difficult to chew. Yes. Yeah. Well, my first Summer League experience, Mark Madsen gave me 20 points and 10 rebounds. I thought. I was <laughs> Gonna be a failure. You know? <laughs> I thought I was gonna be done. Yeah, you but it out wasn't. Okay. A, yeah, well, yeah, it turned out okay, I guess. I guess. But um, with DeAndre, what I like is it's almost a mirror image of a young Dwight. Would you say that when Dwight was coming in? I mean, mm -hmm. averaging just that that ten and ten, um, having uh, just being out of high school. Even though DeAndre did one year of college, I still think that the body type and the type of game that we saw with Dwight Howard at that young age. I see that same potential in Aiton, you know, and I, and I think what we talked about earlier that he will not only dominate inside, but he will improve his game and step out beyond three. Well, let's talk about some of his game. What are some of the offensive tools that you guys see that he'll be able to take advantage of in the NBA? Well, first off, right off the bat, he is a dynamic roller. And what I mean by that is in the pick and roll game, when he sets a screen, he's one of those guys that you have to meet before he gets to the charge circle or it's going to be a dunk. See, certain guys you can, we like to call rotate to them late mm -hmm. because you know, hey, I can make a play on them at the rim. But when you have a dynamic roller, similar to what Clint Capella is for the Houston right. Rockets, when he sets that screen and rolls down the lane, he creates a, pro he creates a problem. So, Drew, I'm going to let you be the point guard. Okay, about time. Uh, yeah, about time. <laughs> I'm going to let you be the point guard. So if I'm DeAndre Ayton and I come set this screen, bam. Right now, Kristen, if you're the defender, you have to slide over. Right and stop me from dunking the basketball. But what that means is you have now activated the weak side of the defense and there's somebody wide open in the corner. So where he's valuable is if you throw him the ball, first of all, he can just catch it, dunk it if you rotate you late. You could do that over me. Se yeah, I definitely could do that. <laughs> Second of all, he's talented. So he's one of those guys, if you throw him the ball and you're here, he can catch it, get to, a quick, get to a quick power dribble, get to his jump hook. He's, a, he's also a guy, hey, you throw it to him in here, Nice quick spin move. He has the fakes, the up and unders. He has all that in his game where he's affecting the paint, but it's not in the traditional way of just, hey, run a quick turn five post up. He affects the game with his pick and roll, lobs, dunks, layups, footwork. He does all that in the screen and roll game. And then on top of that, hey, Drew, if you come off that screen and roll and you keep it and you go, and you go to the basket, he also has the ability to get up there and get it off the glass and rebound, which is important as well, because now he's created a problem with his screen. Two people have come to him. He's freed you up. And when the defense rotates and maybe you miss a shot, whether it's a pull up or a floater, DeAndre Ayton is the guy that can clean it up. He has a lot that he can do in this paint. That's not the traditional big type of stuff where you think, hey, we're going to post him up, slow down the game. You don't have to slow down the game for this kid, because like you said, he's a Dwight Howard type athlete, has good feet knows how to finish. I just need a little bit more from a, from a motor standpoint. Sky's the limit. Okay, so you need a little bit more from a motor standpoint. Where else do you see his game lacking? I think on the defensive end, uh, I think blocking shots at a high rate. Now, the, blocking shots is one thing, but at a high rate, sometimes if you don't block the shot, you can affect the shot. Yes. You know, you could be a rim protector, and I see him having the potential with that athletic ability, just like Dwight, to be one of the top centers in the world to be able to or rim protectors in the world he has that potential but like brendan said he has to step it up a little bit and bring that motor up on the defensive end if you're a big man this area is sacred to you especially from an offensive standpoint deandre too many times in college i didn't see him dominating the paint he made plays as far as blocking shots but this needs to be an area where people are watching for you they're constantly searching for your presence Drew, you made a great point. Sometimes you don't block a shot, you change a shot. And guards are a little bit hesitant, and then they start looking for where you are. And that's what we talk about a presence inside. It's not just a phrase that we use. It has meaning. There's word. It, it has something behind it. 
if you're blocking shots and you're active and you're defensive rebounding, you really help your team from a defensive standpoint. If DeAndre is going to be a well-rounded player, he's going to have to get better at that. That's one of the things at Arizona that stood out to me is I didn't always see the defensive intensity that I needed to, but it's there. The skill set's there. Now it's just about the want to. Well, let's take a look at their depth chart because this offseason, the Suns added not only pieces through the draft, but in free agency, and I like trade it. as well. Trevor Ariza, Ryan Anderson are key additions. Mikael Bridges was selected 10th overall and traded to the team from Philadelphia. It wouldn't obviously take much to improve from worst in the West, but how good do you think this team could be, guys? I think they added not only just shooters, but snipers. I mean, Mikael Bridges, Trevor Reza. I mean, these guys, Ryan Anderson, I mean, these are three-point shooter, I mean, specialists. And when you add a guy like Aiton to be able to roll to the basket with that force, like you said, a dynamic roller, that's going to put so much pressure on the defense trying to either stop him, A, at the rim, or B, rotating the shooters. And it's going to be tough. And I like the makeup of this team. I see what the organization is doing. They're trying to get that Phoenix Suns basketball uh, image back, and I think they're doing it with that identity. I totally agree. I think they have added some shooters. I like the uh, addition of Trevor Reese as well as being a guy that's a 3 and D guy, good locker room guy. I think it's also someone that uh, Bridges can learn from. I think Bridges is going to be excellent. He's a guy that's 40%, he's shot 40% from three from, in college. And he's also a first class athlete, very long and rangy too. So I think guys like River, I mean, guys like Bridges, guys like uh, Ariza, they're going to help this team. This team is going to be a lot better this year than they were last year. Don't think they're ready to make the playoffs yet, but I can see them winning close to 30 games. For some of these younger guys, though, how important is now the veteran presence? You talked about comparing DeAndre to a young Dwight Howard. Ryan Anderson was there during his prime. He was there for a rookie Anthony Davis as well with an Orlando in New Orleans. He's now going to be there for DeAndre's first season. And somebody else, somebody else was there. Trevor Reza was also in that Orlando, he was. too. So I don't know. This might be some champion. conspiracy. They're trying to surround the same veterans around DeAndre <laughs> right. like Dwight. Like, I don't let's know. See. It, it, might be, uh, it might be right. You might be onto something. But I would say with Trevor and Ryan, those guys uh, are winners. Uh, they've been in winning situations. They've right. been in on champ. Trevor's been on in championships, won championships, and on championship teams, so, along with Ryan Anderson. So with that veteran leadership, guys that's going to be not only veterans that are going to be speaking, but veterans that are actually going to be playing right. in, the, in, in the trenches with these guys, I think it's a lot a bigger dynamic for them to have those, those two, two type of guys. Veteran leadership is something that you can't stress enough, especially with the young team. A guy like Ariza can show you, hey, this is how you work. This is how you get to the gym on time. Not just getting there on time, but getting there early, making sure you're doing the proper things. Um, also, they, a lot of times you see veterans, they relay the message from the coaching staff, and that's important as well. Sometimes the coaches voice in your head it can get a little bit stale and you need those veterans to say hey listen no we do need to play defense a little mm -hmm. bit better we do need to pick it up hey we need to have a hard practice today and that's what your veterans are they can help bring that locker room together and the young guys a lot of times will follow and the veterans that are actually in the trenches with oh you. yeah there's one thing having that veteran that's never playing oh man yeah <laughs> hey, ain't nothing like that hey the veteran in the bench that ain't getting in and, and, and that's how it was my last year in cleveland i was trying to tell them guys you need to do this they're like hey man sit down you ain't getting the game exactly. <laughs>